what you're looking at right now is the exact same image, but one looks like a black void and the other reveals this stunning cosmic masterpiece. Well, I think it's a masterpiece anyway. The difference, the stretching technique I used to process it. Hi everyone, I'm Carl Pereira and if you've ever stacked your astrophotography images only to be greeted by what looks like a completely black screen, this video is going to change everything for you. Today, I'm breaking down eight different curve stretching techniques across three major software platforms, SETI Astro, Cyril, these two are free, and Photoshop. By the end of this video, you'll know exactly which stretch you should use for galaxies, nebulae, and star clusters. And more importantly, you'll understand why each one works. So very quickly, here are the eight techniques that I'll be covering. Statistical stretch, star stretch, A-scene transformation, GHS, generalized hyperbolic stretch, and several others. Some of these techniques I guarantee most astrophotographers have never even heard of. So grab your coffee and let's dive right in. We'll be covering Statistical stretch, star stretch, a sign transformation, generalized hyperbolic stretch, and several others. Some of these techniques I guarantee you may never have heard of. So grab your coffee and let's dive right in. I'll never forget the first time I opened my freshly stacked image. I was expecting to see this beautiful nebula I'd spent hours capturing and instead just a black screen. I was genuinely shocked. I thought something had gone completely wrong with my processing. So I started stretching, not really knowing what I was doing, just hoping something would appear. And then almost as if by magic, this incredible image started to come out of that darkness. I was amazed, but here's where I made a huge mistake. I got so excited seeing those first details that I stretched much too quickly and way too much completely spoiling my image. The stars were bloated and overstretched and all the imperfections in my image were clear to see. The result was a complete mess. My breakthrough came when I realized I should take my time and make slow, subtle stretches. I learned to use layers that I could easily undo and then go back to the original if I needed to, where my image remained before stretching. With practice, I got much better at this, but my major breakthrough was when I learned how to remove the stars, stretch the image separately, and then place the stars back, having got them just as I wanted. This made the whole image more pleasing to the eye and gave me so much more control over the final result. So let's open my image in Photoshop. This is it. So I'm opening the stacked image and as you can see, it's pretty black. First, let's talk about why your stacked images look like this, completely black. When you stack your light frames, the result is what we call linear data. It's also called raw data. Your camera captured all that beautiful detail, but it's compressed into such a narrow brightness range that it's essentially invisible to your eyes. Okay, we're gonna take a look now at the histogram. We can see it here. See how all the data is crammed onto the left side? That's your nebula, your galaxy, your stars, all hiding in there. Whatever you've taken, it's all there. Stretching is the process of redistributing this data through the full brightness range so we can actually see what we captured what it means to actually do a curve stretch. So your very black linear data is here. And this is RGB. You can see on the histogram that the data is this thin line here towards the left. All the data in my image is squashed up to the left. And what we want to do is we want to stretch it out so the data is evenly distributed throughout these brightness levels. This is the darkest area of the image. 
these are the mid-tones here, and this is the highlights area. To do a stretch, we just simply bring this slider over to here. Let's check it. Do you see it's stretched and it's moved slightly away from the left side? Let's stretch it again. And you should normally do this carefully, but I'm just trying to exaggerate things. Can you see how it's getting so much brighter as the data is being stretched? Let's check the histogram again. And it's really stretched and moved across. We can move the black point. So what we're doing here is we're moving it over towards the edge. Check that again. You can see I brought the data further towards the edge, but it's now stretched out. Moving into Cyril, the I scene transformation is based on the inverse hyperbolic sine function. Oop, don't know what that means, but don't worry about the math. What matters is how it behaves. If you do want to get into the maths of all these curve stretches, then there are plenty of other YouTube channels which go into maths. Find that a little bit too much. Let's just concentrate on what we need to improve our images, yeah? The stretch factor controls how aggressive the stretch is, while the black point determines where your background sits. What I love about ASIGN is how it preserves detail in both bright and dark areas simultaneously. Watch this galaxy and see how the core doesn't blow out even as I bring up the spiral arms. That's the mathematical beauty of the ASIGN function. When exactly do I decide to use the A sign function? The experience I've got with image processing and astrophotography tells me that if I want to stress an object such as a galaxy or a nebula, and I want to stretch the whole of the image, including the stars, then A sign transformation is really good because it stretches my image and doesn't below the stars too much. And like I've just shown you, when stretching a galaxy, you can stretch the whole galaxy without bloating the core too much. It is a good all round stretching tool for this purpose. Now let's talk about MTF, which is the mid-tone transfer function in Cyril. The MTF transformation gives you three sliders for shadows, highlights, and midtones. We also have a similar way of curve stretching in Photoshop as well. But let's concentrate on Cyril. This is Cyril's most user-friendly stretching tool, I would say. And it includes an auto stretch feature that often gets you 80% of the way there to a good image. But here's a crucial tip. I rarely touch the highlights slider. Instead, I focus on the shadows and mid-tone sliders. I'd like to talk now for a moment about the auto stretch in Cyril. The auto stretch is actually quite intelligent. It analyzes your histogram and suggests a good starting point. But you shouldn't accept the auto stretch just blindly use it as a visual tool to enable you to work on your image in linear mode, but actually seeing what effect it will have on your final image. 
you can actually start with the auto stretch and make changes too. Now we get to the most powerful but complex tool, GHS, that's Generalized Hyperbolic Stretch. That's a mouthful, isn't it? This allows you to target specific brightness ranges with surgical precision. The SP parameter controls the stretch point. This is how aggressively you're stretching. The SP parameter controls which brightness level gets the most contrast boost. The B parameter affects how smooth the transition is, and D controls the overall strength. Here's the key to remember with generalized hyperbolic stretch. Use it slowly, making small adjustments. Apply them, then make another adjustment. Each time, watch how you change the image, bit by bit. Watch how I can enhance just the outer regions of this galaxy that I've recently imaged. This is M100 without affecting the core. Please bear in mind that when you do use globalized hyperbolic stretch, you may need to adjust the black point level what you do is you go to the linear stretch and then you adjust the black point there before returning to the globalized hyperbolic stretch function. And once you've reached a point where you're happy with your image and how it looks, you'll probably need to reduce the noise. If you look at my image here, you'll see it's really quite noisy now. I'll also show you in just a moment after I have reduced the noise, and there are many ways to do this, but that's the topic for another video. Actually, I'll put a link in the description about noise reduction techniques because I do have one or two videos that touches on that. So what I would say is combining globalized hyperbolic stretch with adjustment of the black point and with noise reduction techniques, you can get very interesting results. Just look at how my galaxy is looking after all these stretches that I've made. With one of my favorite tools, Statistical Stretch from SETI Astro Suite. This is a standalone application that automatically analyzes your image's statistical properties and determines the optimal stretching parameters. Here's what makes it so special. Instead of guessing at curve points, it calculates the ideal target median and curves boost based on your actual data. Watch what happens when I apply it to my M100 galaxy image. See how it brought out those dust lanes and those spiral arms without blowing out the brighter core? The key parameters here are target median, which controls overall brightness, and curves boost, which affects contrast. One thing I will say about using a statistical stretch is that you can use several iterations in different layers at different opacities. This is one very effective way to include it in your workflow. It really works well with nebulae and with galaxies as we've just seen. Star stretch is specifically designed for processing star only images. It takes a linear stars only image and stretches it to a non-linear state. It boosts the star colors and it removes the green hue cast. This creates a stars only image ready to be combined with a starless image, typically using the screen blending mode. If you're looking at Photoshop, it's particularly useful for creating natural looking stars when working with narrowband data or when using star removal techniques. I really enjoy using this star stretch.
and it does help me improve my workflow. So now I'm going to show you how to make different curves in both SETI Astro and in Photoshop, but it's also possible in Cyril as well. For example, here we can apply a kind of curve and basically you can apply some kind of an S curve. And what I mean by an S curve is you bring up the highlights like this and you bring down at the other end. And what you do is you end up with some kind of an S curve like this. Now, when you have an S curve, it's good for improving contrast. You can be more aggressive or you can be less aggressive. This is also something that you can do quite easily in Photoshop and you can do some kind of S stretch. So again, you can be more aggressive or less aggressive with your stretch. Let's talk now a little bit more about when you should use these different curve stretches. For galaxies, my approach is generally a bit conservative and gradual, okay? The challenge is revealing those faint spiral without destroying the core detail as I showed you earlier. So you should do this step by step and very slowly and carefully. I typically start with either statistical stretch or a gentle A sign transformation to establish the overall structure of the galaxy. Then I'll use targeted globalized hyperbolic stretch to enhance specific brightness ranges, maybe boosting the spiral arms while protecting the core, for example. As regards nebulae, you can be much more aggressive with your curve stretching, especially if you're working with starless images. Emission nebulae respond beautifully to statistical stretch, while reflection nebulae often need a very delicate touch. The game changer for nebulae is starless processing. When you remove the stars, you can stretch the nebulosity much more aggressively without bloating them. And then, as I say, you can recombine the nebula with the stars after having used a nice star stretch in SETI Astro. So there you have it, at least six different stretching techniques that will transform your astrophotography processing. The key takeaway isn't that one method is universally better than another. It's about understanding what each tool does and when you should use it. This does leave my workflow in a bit of a toing and froing between different astrophotography processing tools. I like these tools, especially Cyril and SETI Astro, because they're always being updated and they are, of course, free. Photoshop is a basic tool, which I always revert to as well. So I can go easily from one tool to another, but that's no problem at all. Now that we've covered all these different stretching techniques and what they do and how to use them, I'd really like to hear from you in the comments section, which of these techniques are you most excited to try? And if you're already using some of them, share your results with me. There's no better way to learn than by experimenting and sharing with the community. If this video has helped you, please smash that like button and subscribe for more astrophotography tutorials. And I'll see you in the next one.